Days after President Muhammadu Buhari explained why he refused to sign the Electoral Act Amendment Bill into law, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, said the National Assembly inserted the direct primaries clause into the bill to ensure that people will find motivation to participate in elections. Will the bill ever be signed? Will the National Assembly be able to override President Buhari on this one? Or will the controversial sections be expunged? Joining us now to share his wealth of experience as a former member of the Senate is Senator Musili Obanikuro, a former Nigeria's High Commissioner to Ghana and one time Minister of State for Defense. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year. Same to you. The most distinguished. Good to be with you today. <laughs> happy and New Year to you. As I said, this is my favorite anchor person here. Wow. Uh -huh. Steve, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, thank Prima you. and proper, lovely OG. Oh, as always. Welcome to the morning. Pleasure show. to be thank here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. All right. Same to you. All right, Senator, let's get right into it. I mean, your party is APC, but we know what's going on uh, with the uh, electoral amendment bill. Uh, we know all the politicking. We know uh, that this looks like it's a fight, or shall we say a tussle, between the governors and the lawmakers. You understand the, the terrain. This is a new year, <laughs> and it will be a defining year for not just APC, but also you know, the other parties, especially. The, and for the country, too. And for the country. Where do you think all these will lead us into, particularly looking at the electoral bill? Because the uh, position of a lot of people is that if we don't get that right, if the president does not sign with or without the, uh, the clause 87 on direct primaries, are we sure that next year, because it's now next year, 2023 elections will be good for the country? Well, let me start by commending the lawmakers. At least they are making effort to ensure that we deepen our democracy. Whether you like what they have done or not, it's an indication that our democracy is well and alive. And people are thinking of how to make it work, not just for the few, but every one of us. Having said that, Nigerian politicians were very funny. And personally, uh, I pride myself in being a retail politician. Retail. So, uh, retail, always interacting with the commoners within the political community. But I won't say that there is none of us, particularly the members of the House of Representatives, who does not know how difficult it is to run elections in Nigeria. Let us look at the difficulties in running general elections. We have security challenges. We have desperation on the part of politicians. We have politicians who usually unleash unemployed youths to go and disrupt elections. An election has become a matter of life and death to quite a number of people. We all know this. It's not hidden. Mm. Now, to run our own internal congresses, even selection, of those who will manage the parties at the world, local government, and state level is a huge, it's a humongous challenge right. to all of us. And to the point that you see people bring guns, deadly weapons, to election venue just to, to appoint, select, <laughs> or elect a world chairman. And now you are saying you want to have direct primaries for all political parties in this country. From the standpoint of security alone, it does not make sense. Mm. Now, a country that is thinking of borrowing 12 trillion to fulfill budget promises yeah. is now considering 180 something billion, according to INEC, yes. to monitor elections across the country. And on top of that, we are not talking, on top of that, you have politicians who with all good intentions that we have seen demonstrated by lawmakers, who will frustrate that intention. I, I, I want to believe that ab initio, that clause should have been inserted 
to mm. begin with. So we're saying we are practicing American democracy. Let us practice it in the true sense of it. That option of either direct or indirect must always be on the table for the party to exercise. It's the party's choice. It should be. Which is, which is what the president is saying. Well, I, I, you see, I don't know <laughs> why the president... You see, the electoral bill is beautiful. If you remove that controversial aspect of it, mm. it's a beautiful law. I want to commend them. Okay. For the first time in our electoral history, we have uh, electoral crimes being defined yeah. in our law. Yeah. Th that's beautiful. You can't fault that. But the aspect that is controversial, the president saw this thing go through the first reading, second reading. Uh, the public uh, 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 engagement, yeah. the public engagement on the bill before it was finally passed into law. You see, in advanced democracies, when the bill, even in the parliament, when the bill is going through parliament, you know where the prime minister stands. When the <laughs> bill is going through uh, uh, Congress, you know where the president of America stands. Right. So you don't wait until a lot of resources, man hour, mm. energy, money, mm. right. is spent mm. on a bill, and then you go through this rigmarole of it. Not so a, a, a very uh, consequential bill at that. Because this bill is very consequential. We're talking about electronic voting, which has, we have seen and make our elections better. Absolutely. And without a transparent, a credible election, <laughs> uh, you can never get the public on your side. Okay. That's but true. the whole okay. idea really is yeah. about the electoral reforms. We've seen these battles over the years, talking about electoral reforms. This time around is whether direct or indirect primaries. But the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has said that when the National Assembly resumes recess, um, that they will revisit mm -hmm. and remove that particular direct mm -hmm. primary clause, clause yeah. from the bill. Now, beyond all of these, what are the things that Nigerians really need to look at when it comes to electoral reforms? Besides just the battle, and since you've been in politics for years, what are those nitty-gritty things that we need to look at? You see, first of all, the most important thing is participation. You see, we are what Americans call Monday, Monday morning quarterback, most Nigerians. We don't want to participate, but after the election, everybody comes out, hey, people did not show up, people did not participate, there is no credibility for the election, and where are they? You see, the thing is, people must develop interest in this thing. One, we have no country but Nigeria. That's right. That one is certain. And whether we like it or not, this country represents the aspiration of black race in the world, whether we want to believe that or not. If we are able to elevate Nigeria, all this noise about black people being treated anyhow all over the world, we change. It will change immediately. So we must get it right from the democratic standpoint. Ensure participation by all and sundry, and ensure that we have a credible process where people will be encouraged to come to the uh, a venue, voting venue, cast their vote, knowing fully well that the end result will represent what the people wanted. That, to me, is a process that all of us must participate in. When I say all of us, I'm not talking 100%. But a majority of Nigerians must be committed to it. As long as Nigerians are not committed to it, politicians like me will continue to take the people for a ride. Mm. And you said one thing, your question is very pertinent, because if there's no participation, if there's no credibility, the politicians will continue to behave like thank God that we are behaving 
as we speak today. If you cross over to Ghana, you will see how much respect politicians have for the electorate. Yeah. You know the simple reason? Vote counts. That's right. But we have gotten to a point where votes does not count anymore. So people behave arrogantly. They just go about it as if whether you like it or not will come in. They will go through the, uh, the runs when election is coming, adv uh, put advert on television, go around campaigning, knowing fully well within them that they don't really need the people to get in there. Because where you have 25% of the electorates or 30% of the electorates voting for election, you can't claim that to be a mandate. It's not a serious mandate. It's a questionable mandate. When you are running the affairs of state and you have a questionable mandate, should it not occur to you that we are the majority that I'm presiding over? I, I, I don't, why we don't invest so much energy into getting the participation of the people still beat my imagination. And that is what is important in all this game. We must make conscious effort from the family. I have some family members that when they are going out for election, they wake up everybody in their household and match everybody to go and participate. It is, it is key. And once we have that, and the process is credible enough for people to know that their vote will count. As we speak today, an average person, they've lost total confidence in the electoral process. Mm. And that is why mm. the number of participations yes. has been dwindling. And it will continue to dwindle until this kind of effort to have a sensible and credible electoral process is put in place. Put in place. That, that, that's correct, uh, distinguished senator. But let me quickly circle back to um, the question of the contentious clause of 87. In the very likely event that the lawmakers, when they resume from recess, you know, remove that clause and represent to the president and the science, you know, with all the uh, things that we are expecting and celebrating, electronic uh, transmission of results, et, et cetera, do you think that the removal of the direct primary clause uh, will affect the chances of certain uh, presidential hopefuls? And I'm speaking in terms of those who think that the direct primary's um, advocacy is to boost the chances of Ashwaju Bola Metinubu. Well, let me say this. I have told you that I'm a retail <laughs> politician. When Anything is put in place in this country for the, our own common good. The first thing you see an average Nigerian trying to do is how to circumvent it. Mm. I understand that some people would be better off with direct primary if allowed to take place in a normal environment. Some people. Our environment is not normal. <laughs> I'm being honest. You see, if we are deceiving ourselves, we will never get anywhere. Mm. But when we are honest with ourselves, we will see where the problems are and how to manage it. But right now, I'm being honest with you. I don't see any political party doing a direct primary election successfully. Mm. It, it, there will be a lot of manipulations. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. That's true. And those who think today that they will benefit from it will now see at the end of the day that <laughs> those people, you know, those, immediately it is the law. Those who want to prevent you from getting there will set in motion a process of ensuring, of circumventing the entire election. So, and those who are going to... Steve... You also participated to a reasonable extent. This game has become a money game. Mm. Cash and carry. Mm. People are desperate to win at all costs. That we have, it's not me manufacturing this. I 
Am I the one manufacturing it? That's all. It, so it, what will solve you that is not the even problem. a politician, <laughs> you know fully well how desperate we, we get when it comes to election we period. Witnessed, we have witnessed a lot of the issues at hand during the electoral process. So but, in answering your question, yes, I believe that if the parties have the option mm. to either direct or indirect, indirect. it is their own political uh, uh, party, uh, party decision Consensus to make. can even be an option. Exactly. Is it, and do, why, do, why do we, why is consensus becoming popular these days? It's because people are trying to avoid violence, mm. which has become predominant when you have political gathering. And that is why a lot of people can vast consensus, which to a, a, a large extent has reduced violence within the polity. And as long as you insist sometimes that, though, though some people say, hey, this is democracy, we've got to go and vote mm. to determine. Who, but let us evolve a process that will be violence free, crime free, where people will go in, yeah. cast their vote, and know fully well that when somebody is going out to say, I'm going to vote, or you know fully well that he's coming back home. Not, not that you are, you are on the mat. Your wife is on the prayer mat, <laughs> praying for you to come mm. back alive. This is where we are now. This is where we've gotten ourselves. Our concern is how do we get ourselves out of this? And the way to get ourselves out of this, one, people have conversed so many things. But among other things is let the people become the served and let the elected people become the servants. Mm. So now you have um, basically dismissed the direct primaries. As I didn't a, dismiss as a, it. it. Well, that's <laughs> it should be an option, <laughs> that's be an option for the party. Well, for I the think parties. the lawmakers took their time to include that in the no, clause. And it, I thought, they thought it was very let me, important. Let me, let me because, be honest with you. Yes. That was a self-serving self-serving self mm. clause right. in that law that, or bill, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's a self-serving thing. Yeah. Because the idea... Was because some of them had loggerheads with the their governors. governors and they won't allow them to come back because of the manipulation that the governor <laughs> have the capacity to do. That is the that is the only reason. You don't make laws for you, you are supposed to make laws for the good of the people. That is the essence of it. Not make laws to serve your own personal yeah. interests. I sympathize with them. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't also be happy where I know I'm popular within my constituency. Yeah. But because we have a, a, a governor who has become God, who wants to determine everything, and is preventing that from... Then we must think and come up with a better way to deal with that situation. Now, making it a law, to me, is not it. I don't think they should have legislated on that. Mm. You have raised a lot of valid points in terms of violence during election, and you've also basically accused some politicians of, you know, hiring the youth during the process of election to try to circumvent the votes and all of that. Now, what do you make of the um, security reform on, in, as it pertains, uh, you know, the electoral process? Shouldn't that be something that, you know, should be put in place first before we start talking about the, the, issues of direct or indirect primary. The first problem in this country is indiscipline. Mm. Corruption and indiscipline. We are, we are grossly, grossly out of it. You see people do all sorts. And you see a policeman standing beside them doing nothing. Then you wonder, what manner of society do we live in? How did we get here? When we were small, we used to see policemen with short, short knickers on the street of Lagos yes. and with a baton. And once they say stop, you will stop. When you see a policeman in those days, you can't commit any crime. Who, the, who are you? They will deal with you decisively. But these days, people commit crime Look at Lagos. We said we don't want to cut down the road. Mm. There's no part of Lagos where you go. Even Ikoi here, 
You still see this Okada all over, and you see police vehicle parked somewhere. <laughs> and those Okada are driving off in droves without consequence. It's the same thing that has affected everything. And that is why we can't conduct. I can still recall in 1991, 92, during this NRC SDP, when we have this uh, option uh, A4. Mm -hmm. People will come to a venue of election and queue behind the candidate of their choice. We didn't have this level of violence. So we have, we, this society has gotten to a point now where we need to pay serious attention to discipline. Indiscipline is too much. And if we don't get that under control, it's the foundation. If the foundation is wrong, nothing you can put on it. And, and, and I think we're at that point now. In fact, if you look at it even from your immediate environment, and you look at the values of this upcoming young ones, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked at the level of indiscipline we have there. So uh, uh, it is difficult to get it right if people don't know that doing this is unacceptable and if it is done, it's going to be punished. That is the problem we have as a people right now. And I have been thinking about the best way huh. to go about it. If we don't put that under control, honestly, there's nothing else that will work as far as this society is concerned. I, I agree with you, uh, distinguished Senator, but let me um, come back to the issue of retail politics that you subscribe to yeah. um, and how it affects your base, which is Lagos. So two quick things. One, um, the issues with APC in Lagos State, what's your own candid assessment of it? A lot of people think that it looks like um, the landlord, in quotes, is busy at the federal level, and therefore the sub-landlords and the you know, uh, younger people are basically struggling among themselves. And we saw what you alluded to uh, during the Congresses, three different, uh, shall we say, two different factions apart from the main one. Um, what would be your view? And then we have seen that uh, if, if a faction of the party, Lagos for Lagos movement, has moved out of the party and has joined the PDP. So I'm asking you, as somebody who understands that terrain, <laughs> you know, very well, uh, you ran on, on the platform of, of PDP in 2007 and you attempted in 2014. Do you think that the, the faction that has moved out of APC will injure the party? And how do you think that everything that led to that uh, factionalization will be addressed by the party. That's one. And secondly is, what are you up to? Me, as a Yes, person. because I know that you tried to run for Lagos West Territorial election in 2014, 2015. Um, it didn't quite work out, but now it's a totally different ball game this time around. Are you running and what will you be running for? You see, um, politics, it's a game mm. of interest. Absolutely. Um, the contentions that we have within the party, APC in Lagos, is understandable. For the, since 1999, AD, AC, yes. ACN, APC has been in control of Lagos. So, it has become automatic for people who contest under APC to win. That's an assumption, mm. and it's a safe assumption. Yeah. So within that family, that kind of infighting is expected. It is, personally, I don't like people moving out of a party to another party, if it is avoidable. You moved yourself before? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I said, if it is avoidable. If it's avoidable. Mm. If, it, if it is avoidable. But 
There are some things that you cannot manage. People have aspirations. If they know that their aspiration cannot be met mm. in a particular place, they reserve the right to move to another place where it can be achieved. Having said that, there is no doubt in my mind that the election of 2023 in Lagos State mm. will be a very serious one. If the last four years yeah. is anything to go by. To go by. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Mm. Let's put it that way. And the demography has changed. Uh, you have so many factors that will play a major role in the coming election. You have the anti sas people who are SARS. still very aggrieved. That's right. You have some activists who, uh, who protested in 20, was it 2010? 2020. No, uh -oh. it was in 2010 the, during the, the 2012 Occupy Nigeria. Nigeria. 2012, January. They are saying they want to come out again to start another round of protest. And then you have the economy going south mm. and some people are trying to bring it back to stabilize it. And it is a common knowledge that subsidy is no longer fashionable. <laughs> How we're going to come out of it, and you have poverty all over the place. So the shape that this coming election will take, we can see. Mm. We can see. And um, we have to be extremely careful. That is why we cannot afford to lose anybody at this point. It's better to keep what we have mm. and manage individual interest. Yes, Shuaju is trying to run the top, that will definitely take a lot of, you know, away from us, yeah, in Lagos, in terms of the stability that we have enjoyed over a long period of time with his presence. I also do believe that there are other leaders who are also eminently qualified mm. to moderate whatever the fallout of other elections of within primary, our own in-house elections will be. Mm. So there's no doubt in my mind that we have the capacity to manage it. Uh, and that is why that option, if you look at the last primary we had, we were going to do a full-blown primary. It was not successful. We ended up with some consensus here mm. and there. And that, to a reasonable extent, minimized violence, and what have you. That's right. I, I don't see anything wrong in having a repeat where it is possible okay. to ensure that we minimize crisis. Friction. We, mm. Election is not about losing life. Mm. It's about making life better for all of us. Mm. Now, as per where I want to go, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's still... I'm still thinking. I'm reflecting. <laughs> and consulting, maybe. Uh, uh, God bless you. I'm <laughs> reflecting and I'm consulting. But be rest assured that uh, we are not going to sit idle in 2023. The idea, we have acquired these experiences over time. Mm. We have to put it to use. I'm in my 60s now. Mm. Uh, Steve, I don't want to be contesting when I'm approaching 70 or after 70. Mm. This may be probably my last election. In terms of contesting election, yeah. I want to participate in other areas. After I don't want to be contesting election in my 70s or my late 60s. No, I don't want to. So this might be the last shot that I have. Also, that your you son mean... is also doing well as a politician. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You mean this time or 10 years from now? <laughs> because no, you're going to 70. You just turned 60, didn't you? Yeah, I'm yeah, 62 so... now. Okay. Yeah, so, so, you see, it's, uh, I want... For me, as but an you've been every, everything, Senator. You've been you well, know, commissioner, Grace, you know, Senator, Grace, everything Grace. except that one seat. Exactly. It's, it's, but the, Do we have the likelihood that you might? But I'm thinking about it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an indigenous person in this state. Right. I have a right to be a governor in this state, mm. and I'm eminently qualified to be it. So, if the time comes and I feel, uh, why not? Okay. So, so, well, in the event that you know the national. Assembly reconvenes and then they remove that uh, direct primary clause. 
your own personal assessment, do you think that the president will assent, or do you think that there are other controversial issues in the bill that might like you see, make him not assent? A lot of things have been said about the president. Mm. So many things. Some have said is grossly insensitive, is this, is that. But I want to believe that the president must have or has his eyes on the future. Mm. If you have your eyes on the future, you must think about your legacy. That's right. As we speak today, I don't think there is any better legacy that the president can leave behind outside a clean, transparent electoral process. That's right. Nigerians will forgive him on other things if that is the only achievement mm. he's able to put in place. So I am also using this platform to plead with him. So once the objectionable clause is removed, he should sign it into law. It is shameful that we can't conduct election in this country. It is very shameful. And you go to Benin Republic here, yeah? mm -hmm. you go to Togo, you go to Ghana, and you see a reasonably, reasonably conducted elections. And we, the giant, so-called giant, or whether it's sleeping or way away, I don't know, <laughs> can't do local government elections. Can't, it's, it's very sad. So if we can elevate the election standard in, at the national level, maybe that will rub off yeah. the local government election so that it will not be cut and paste as we know it today. Mm. Well, all right. We want to thank you very, very much for joining us on the morning show this morning. It's been quite a pleasure having you here. And to wish you all the best, you know, yes. in, you know, towards 2023. Absolutely. Since my, you my star, I do. My star anchor woman. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you here this morning. Thank and you, My sir. dear brother. Thank you. God will continue to strengthen you. Thank you so you much. You are always in my prayers. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much.